In the previous video, I told you that a titration reaction requires the use of two solutions. It's very common for one of the solutions to be an acid and the other solution to be a base, in which case we refer, we refer to it as an acid-base titration. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do some calculations with data from a titration between a strong acid and a strong base. In this first problem, we're being asked to determine the pH at the equivalence point in the titration of 25 milliliters of 0.1 molar HCl with 10 milliliters of NaOH. Let's just say that we're putting the 25 milliliters of HCl in the flask down here at the bottom, and the burette is going to contain the 10 milliliters of NaOH. We don't know the molarity of the NaOH solution, but remember, that's pretty normal. In a titration, we typically only know the molarity or the concentration of one of the two solutions. The problem is asking us to calculate the pH at the equivalence point, and if you recall, the equivalence point is the point where the moles of one of the solutions is equal to the moles of the other solution. In this particular situation, the equivalence point will be the point where the moles of the HCl are equal to the moles of the NaOH. To help us solve titration problems, it's usually a good idea to start by writing a balanced chemical equation between the two solutions that are reacting in the titration, in this case HCl and NaOH. Strong acids and strong bases react together in a displacement reaction, meaning that the cations are just swapped. So the cation H plus is swapped for the cation Na plus. This gives us NaCl and HOH or H2O. It's an acid-base neutralization reaction. To help us calculate the pH at the equivalence point of this titration, we're going to be using an ice table. Just like with the buffers, the ice tables that we use in titrations need to be in units of moles, not in units of molarity. The reason for this is because during a titration, as we add solution from the burette into the flask, the volume inside this flask changes. As the volume changes, the concentration or the molarity changes as well. The molarity is not constant during a titration. It changes. And so we can't be using molarity data in our ice table because it, it changes, it's not constant. So that means that the very first thing that we have to do in order to be able to fill in our ice table is determine how many moles we have of our initial starting um, reactants. We'll get that information by taking the concentration of the HCl, which is 0.1 molar, which means 0.1 moles of HCl for every liter of the solution, and we'll multiply it by the volume of HCl in liters, 0.025. And this tells us that we have 0 0.0025 moles of HCl. That's our starting amount. Now let's focus on the NaOH. We need to know how many moles of NaOH we have. Now we only know the volume of NaOH. We don't know the molarity, which means we can't do a calculation like this. So how are we going to figure out the moles? Well, remember that we're being asked to calculate the pH at the equivalence point, and at the equivalence point, the moles of HCl and the moles of NaOH are equal to each other. So we just know that the moles of NaOH are also 0 0.0025, again, because it's being stipulated that we're at the equivalence point. This is only going to be true when we're at the equivalence point. We have no products yet. Because this is a strong acid reacting with a strong base in a forward reaction, the change um, for this particular reaction is not going to be x. We will be able to predict exactly what that change will be. To predict the change, we're going to look at our two reactants. We're going to find the limiting reactant. In this case, we don't have one because they're equal to each other. And we'll subtract that amount from both products or both reactants because we're going to get a complete reaction. Because of the stoichiometry of this reaction, we'll be adding that same amount to both of our products. And when this reaction is done, we'll have no HCl, we'll have no NaOH, we will have 0 .0, 0 0.0025 moles of NaCl, and we will have made 0 0.0025 moles of water. Now remember we're being asked to calculate the pH at the equivalence point. So at this point, what we need to do is look at what we have present in the flask and figure out which one of these substances is contributing to the pH. And we can use that to calculate the pH. Since we don't have any HCl or NaOH, we won't be considering them anymore. We'll just be focusing over here. Now water is neutral. So the pH of water is seven, neutral pH. 
uh, we really should never even be worrying any, about the water in this solution either. NaCl is an ionic compound. What we need to do is figure out if this is a, cation, a, a basic ionic compound or an acidic ionic compound. The sodium ion Na plus comes from group 1A, so this is a neutral cation. The chloride anion Cl minus, this is also one of the neutral anions. So this is a neutral ionic compound. Because it's a neutral ionic compound, it also has a pH of seven. Because the products of this reaction both have a pH of 7, the solution at the equivalence point is also going to have a pH of 7. And this is true for all strong acid, strong bases, strong acid, strong base titrations at the equivalence point. So for all strong acid, strong base titration at, at the equivalence point. Let's take a look at another example that's gonna be a little bit more interesting than this. So we have the same solution again. We have our HCl down here in the flask, 25 milliliters again, and it's the same concentration, 0.1 molar. And we have our NaOH in the burette again, and it says 10 milliliters added. At this time, we know the molarity of the NaOH, 0.5 molar. Now again, that's not very normal. Um, normally, we don't know the concentration of both of these solutions, but for this particular problem, we do. We're being asked to calculate what the pH is in the titration after 10 milliliters of this 0.5 molar NaOH solution have been added. It might be the equivalence point. It might not. We don't know. Remember that we want to start by writing a balanced equation for this reaction, and this is always going to be the first thing that you do in all titration problems. You want to really be thinking about what the chemical reaction is, what kind of products are being made. We'll make an ice table. And remember that in all titration problems, the ice table needs to be done in moles because the volume is changing. In the previous problem, we calculated the initial moles of HCl. Let's just go back and take a look at that. It was 0.0025. Because we have the same volume and the same concentration, we have the same number of initial moles of HCl. We're able to calculate the moles of NaOH this time because we know its molarity, 0.5 moles of NaOH per liter. You can multiply it by the solution volume in liters. We have 0.005 moles of NaOH. We have no products yet. Now again, for the change, this is not going to be a minus x minus minus x problem because this is a strong acid strong base. This is a total reaction. So we're going to be looking at the amounts, the starting amounts of HCl and NaOH. We want to find the limiting reactant, the thing that we have the least of. That's the HCl. We only have 0 0.0025 moles of HCl. That limiting reactant is going to react to completion. And it's also going to dictate the amount of NaOH that is reacted. Because these react in a one-to-one -one ratio, we're only going to be reacting 0 0.0025 moles of NaOH. It's also going to dictate the amount of NaCl that we make and the amount of water that's made. So let's calculate what we have here at the end. We have no more HCl. We have some NaOH left over. We have some NaCl left over. And we've made some water. And we now what we need to do, just like in the last problem, is figure out which of these things is contributing to the pH of the solution. Since we have no HCl, it's not contributing to the pH of the solution. In the previous video, we saw that the pH of water is neutral and the pH of NaCl is neutral as well. But we know that NaOH is a strong base and it is contributing to the pH of the solution. So we're gonna use this to calculate the pH of the solution. Now this is going to be a slightly tricky calculation 
because the pH of the solution is based on the concentration of the NaOH solution. What we have here is the number of moles of NaOH. So we need to figure out what the molarity is of the NaOH solution. What I'm actually gonna do to make myself some room, I'm just gonna shrink this up a little bit, make this smaller, maybe squeeze it over here. And I'm gonna give some space here to calculate the molarity of the NaOH solution. We know that we have 0 0.0025 moles of NaOH. We need to think about the volume of the NaOH solution. And you might be thinking, oh, the volume is 10 milliliters, but don't forget that the NaOH solution has been added to the HCl solution. So the volume is the combined total volume of the two. Remember the reason that we have to do this in moles is because the volume changes. So the combined total volume, 10 milliliters and 25 milliliters, 0 0.010 liters plus 0 0.0025 liters, 0 0.025 liters. This is our combined volume of the two solutions. And this is going to give us the molarity of this solution. 0 0.0714 molar. NaOH. Now, as we've talked about before, it's going to be easier to calculate the pOH of this solution. So the pOH of this solution is going to be the negative log of the OH minus concentration, which is the negative log of 0 0.0714, which is 1.15, and then we can use that to get the pH. pH plus pOH is 14, so 14 minus 1.15, 12.85.